Well, this is Baruch Fleischman again here at the Tikkun Elevator Kolal. I'm going to look here over at the Atlas of Medieval Jewish History and our our really topic, I think, that the inside of what we're going to see, and there's especially because right now we're in the three weeks, we have to understand that we went through a tremendous uh, exile. That is actually the Shechina went through the tr a tremendous exile, and we are now in Galus. Now, the... The rabbis say that the situation of the Jews as the Shechina is in exile and as we are in exile with the Shechina is really a long, long, long ago fight. It took place between two brothers approximately, I'll just put a number on it, 3,700 years ago. That's a long time. But as anyone who's, who has seen a family grow or a community grow, that you realize that through a few generations, in good conditions, families grow very large. And that's the nature of life in general. So here we had this fight between two brothers, twin brothers. One bro brother was Asaph, went through the material way. He wanted the satisfaction of his appetites. The other one was Yaakov, his brother Jacob. So it's Esau and Jacob, a fight that started a long time ago. Because the rabbis say like this, Rome is Asaph. Romi who, eth, who Edom. It's also called the color red. Red is the color of blood. That is the color of our brother. And we live with him now. He this was able, because of our own sins, to destroy the Holy Temple approximately 2,000 years ago. And since then, we've been living, at least half of us have been living in his countries. Because Rome spread out, became Christianity, and spread into all throughout Europe. Two different versions of Christianity. One was called the, the Western Roman Empire. That's the Catholic Church, as we understand it, the Roman Catholic Church. And then you have the Eastern Catholics, which for a long time were controlled by uh, Turkey, which at that time was Byzantium. So Byzantium was uh, the, the <coughs> Christian stronghold in the in the east the jews many jews were exiled to those places so there's a there's a, a zoe that i saw just to give a little background that he said that when we came into exile really the exile was two different times after bar kochba was the second time and then of course the destruction of the temple which takes took place first uh before that <sighs> The, the, the Zohar says like this, the, the God took all of the most Zaris, the most, the most spirited of the Jews, and he sent them to the Arabs, to Yishmoel, to our, our uncle, to, and his children. So he, we sent them to the Arabs who are lazy. So he took the people with the most energy, the people with the most passion, and he sent it to a group of people who really are very, very lazy. That's their nature. On the other hand, the weaker people, the people with the clerks and the servants and this and that, or whatever it would be, however it would be, he sent them to Asaph. So in one case, he was uh, sort of like cut down on the urgency of the first uh, 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 of the people that were so urgent by sending them to lazy people. And we had to absorb their culture and remain Jewish within the middle of a culture which is full of a lot of incest also, but a lot of the things that go along with laziness. On the other hand, going to Europe, those group of people who were considered by the Zohar to be the weaker of the Jews had to go to, the, to our brother Esau, who is steeped in blood. You have the bullfights in Spain. You had the Colosseum in Rome. We still have vestiges of that. Europe has been plagued with vicious, vicious wars and the creation of weapons of mass disruption, a, a disruption that the, the Southern Hemisphere does, never knew about. We had to live with them and we had to survive those times. So now we're going to go back. It goes in a lot of different places, but we understand that this is an ancient fight. These two brothers struggle. The thing about it is, is that they, there's a phrase in, in the, the rabbis say is that as this one grows up, the other one goes down. Right now, the Jewish people are back in our land. It's not completely sovereign, but we're back in our land. We could pray in that land. 
And the church is being shown to be extremely, extremely perverted and corrupt as well. It's going down. Those are the two balancing forces that are still fighting it out. And we are still living in this exile, a time of the exile of the Shekhinah. So it comes along here, uh, this man, Chaim Beinart. Hein Beinart, Beinart is really a, a tremendous works on Sephardic Judaism. Now, this man is born in Russia. He's an Ashkenaz Jew. Came from a Hasidic background. He eventually got into, uh, into the study of history. And uh, he became a professor at Hebrew University. I have some of his works. I had two volumes. And one of them, I don't know what happened to it, on with the legacy of Sephardic Jews. And what happened in Spain. Spain is really, really important. So now we're going to get into this, but we still haven't gotten to uh, Spain. And let's see some more other things. Now, uh, let's see, where are we? Here's where we're at. Let me get my pencil back. We're at this place. Let me get in here. Now, this is the Persian invasion of Palestine. Remember, let me see if I can bring this down some more so we can see it better. Now, all of these different different things, as you see, that we're looking over here at the land of Israel. Here's Beersheba, here's Gaza, Jabne, Yavne, uh, Yericho. Uh, where is I'm looking for Jerusalem? Oh, here's Jerusalem. Okay, so this is this is a piece called the Persian invasion of Palestine, and we're moving to the years of 1614 and 1618. And the question is, is how do the Jews survive? So first, we're going to take a look at what Chaim uh, <clears throat> uh, Beinart has written. He says, in the year 606, the Persian leg legions invaded Syria. They invaded Syria, Palestine, and Phoenicia <clears throat> and began to dismember the Byzantine Empire. Now, the Byzantine Empire are the are the Eastern Christians evolved into Russia, today, Serbia, different places, Greece, different places where this religion is dominant, that is, this form of religion. Palestine was a natural center for Persian-Jewish collaboration. Now, this is the interesting thing about the time we live in now, where the Persians have turned themselves into the absolute haters of the Jews uh, for religious reasons, whereas previously the Jews always got along very well a natural ally was the Persians. So at any rate, for Persian-Jewish collaboration, since it had a large Jewish community that is in Persia, that was a potential counterforce to the Christian population and Byzantine rule. Now, I think I read that wrong. He meant to say that there was a large Jewish community in Palestine, what we call Palestine today or Israel today. And the Christians, the Byzantine, had been putting Christians and churches into that area in order to counteract the presence of the Jews that were there. Most of the Jewish population was centered in the in Galilee, in the Galilee, which we call the Galil, in an area that controlled the route leading from Damascus to Palestine. So here you're talking. Let's just get a little idea here. The Damascus would be, let's say, over this way. Let me see what he has. He said from Damascus. Here's a route, and this route still exists today. It says that it comes out of Damascus, out of these mountains that are up here, and comes down towards the. Sea of the Galilee. Okay, and so he says, Jews of Gal Galilee revolt and join the Persian army. Okay, because as we said before, there is a natural ally here. Let me see if I can get this better focus. Get down a little bit more. The, the natural ally of the Persians has, throughout history, has been the Jews. Remember Queen Esther and all of that. This, this is a very important idea. So let's go on back over here. There was also a concentration of Jews in uh, Jerusalem, so large that the governor of the city tried to force them to convert to Christianity. So once again, you have this fight between the Christians, which my premise is, is that they are the descendants of our brother uh, Esau. The fall of Antioch to the Persians severed their land route between Constantinople and Palestine, and in 613, the Persians entered Damascus. So who these Persians are, I can't tell you right now. He says Jerusalem was captured in the year 16, 614, and in 619, the Persians conquered Egypt. So this is another big Persian thing. Now, don't think that the Persians are gone. 
because the Persians of the Gemara, I saw a Gemara in, in Yuma where it, it says like this, it's a metaphor and I don't know exactly what it means. It says like this, he says that nine months after Esau uh, uh, conquers the world, Messiah will come. Then another version says eight months after, nine months, excuse me, nine months at the time of gestation, after the Persians conquered the world, the Messiah will come. This is telling me, I think, that the Persians have a lot of power and be careful. Depends. They've been friends with the Jews before and there are Jews living in this Muslim Iran right now. And maybe not prospering and spreading out, but they live there comfortably, as far as I, I'm concerned. So Jews was captured in, uh, captured in 614 and 619 and the Persians conquered Egypt. In all these conquests, the Jews and Samaritan received the Persians as liberators turning many cities over to them. Now, we're assuming that at this time, the Persians are heathens. And so the heathens, the Chris, but the Christians are in a blood war with the Jews. They massacre them from time to time in different places, but the Jews are spread out. It's not so easy to get us. So the Persians' conquest of Palestine was inter interpreted by the Jews as the advent of the messianic period of redemption. This ferment was reflected in the eschatological literature of the period and in the increasing number of messianic movements amongst the Jews. So we are an oppressed people in exile. The Shrina, as we say, is in exile along with us. And we really have to constantly be looking for the light. The Jewish community's euphoria over the Persian conquest, however, was short-lived. The Persians did not fulfill their promise to the Jews and were soon decided to favor the Christian community and persecuting the Jews, one, the Jewish ones. So the Jews, once again, are being persecuted. In a battle near Nineveh, the Byzantines defeated the Persians and proceeded to occupy, I don't know these places, we'll see if we can see it, over Statisifo, uh, the year 1628. With the death of Kosharo, 628, whoever Kosharo was, uh, he was, the way was open to the conquest of Jerusalem, 629, but the days of Byzantine rule, too, were short-lived. The Islamic conqueror stood at the gate. Now, what you saw here was is that the Jews always wanted to, the, the we a continuous fight and persecution, persecution of the Jews by the Christians. Somehow the Jew, Jewish communities continued to survive. Now let's see what we got down here. He says, uh, he's showing us here, uh, unless we have a few numbers here, so we can go over them, very interesting. In the year 614, Jerusalem was conquered, was conquered by the Persians, control of the city was given to the Jews. Okay, that was the year 614. Let's move on. We have to find number three. Sometimes I have a little trouble finding these. Okay, here we go. 616, the Jewish army conquers Acre. Okay, so this is in the north, northern part of Israel. Okay, near where today is Naria. And uh, so this was a Jewish army. Okay, number four, 616, moving on two years later, or the same year, excuse me, siege of Tyre. So moving up into what is today Lebanon, uh, by Jewish army, that siege failed, fails, fails. So number four, where's number four? We did number four. Here's number five. 617, uh, the situation deteriorates. Persians persecute the Jews. So they start persecuting the Jews, just as we said. And that's what happens in this particular time. We got to the year 618, we went to the year 629, and now we're on the verge of what we're going to see over here with the development of Islam. This is Baruch Fleischmann, Tikkun, Elevator Kolo, Heim Beinart, Atlas, Jewish Medieval History.